What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Just a Minute with Justin Young. And hey, I'm Austin Smith, your Hoop Scene host. And the guy to the screen next to me is none other than our editor in chief here at hoopscene.com, Justin Young. JY, man, look, this show obviously is going to be about the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions. And I want to waste zero time, man. What an event. I mean, just real quick, JY, tell me about it, man. Just, just give me your first initial thoughts after the event. What do you got? Yeah. So I, you know, I fly back home across the country after our events and I was thinking about it on the way home. I, I thought this was probably one of my two most favorite Bob Gibbons wow. events that we've had in Atlanta since I've been, since we've had it at Swanee Sports Academy over the last decade. Uh, and probably one of my five most favorite that I've ever had in covering the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions in two decades. I thought it was loaded. I thought the talent was exceptional. I thought we had a nice mixture of guys that played their way into to all American statuses, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. I thought we had a lot of guys that played their way into some national ranking dialogue, which we talked about before the event last week. I thought we had a lot of guys who nobody really knew much about outside their own team that I thought played their way into the conversation. And I thought our young guys that we had were as good as we've ever had at the Bob Gibbons tournament champion. So there's a lot to go through. I showed you this before we started recording. These are all notes that I've got to go through. Right. Okay. These are all game, game logs and stuff like that. So this is going to take a while. So if you're a college coach, bear with me. I've talked to a lot of you already on the phone over the last couple of days. Um, but just an exceptional, exceptional weekend that we had uh, in Atlanta for the, for the absolutely loaded Bob Gibbons tournament of champions. Uh, I can't get enough of it. And thank goodness we have it on film because we can go back and watch it some more. Right. Absolutely. I mean, man, I think that stack of papers you got just about sums everything up <laughs> with, yeah. with all the games and action we had. And we know you're pretty busy, man. So after this, we're going to make sure you're able to get back to it. But I want yeah, to do something special. I want to do something special for today, Jay. Well, let's do like a four quarter segment. We'll call it four quarter fast break in a sense. And I want to just talk about the Love four it. biggest takeaways from the event, man. So let's just go ahead and get right to it. What do you, let's go through order. Top four takeaways for you, man. Let's go through it. Yeah, my number one thing was you have to be bigger and better than your hype, okay? This event, we had a lot of guys who have some giant platforms. And we have a lot of guys, a lot of eyeballs. We have a lot of guys that draw the mixtape mafia in wherever they go. Uh, I'm not down with that. I'm just not. You got to be bigger and better than the hype that you come in with. And nine times out of 10, well, I think a lot of players do that. But eventually, if you can't catch up to that hype, that's a really, really hard fall down, okay? And so part of the game, thank goodness, it's, it's just such a different world now. There's a lot more eyeballs watching. There's a lot more screens that are watching. There's a lot more lenses that are capturing all the action. And with that comes a heavy crown, right? And so, like, you have to really understand how to do that. I didn't see uh, a product that is able to live up to the hype on some of these occasions. But nine of the other 10 opportunities, I saw a lot of guys – that not only did they live up to their hype, they exceeded their hype, which to me got me really excited in how we finished the tournament and with the types of players that, that really wanted to get better, that wanted to win, more importantly. Like, if you don't want to win, yeah. I'm not down with you, man. I'm just, I can't comprehend that. Right. Otherwise, you're just a really popular loser. And I'm just, I can't, I can't operate in that way. So, like, for me, like, that was the thing that I saw a lot of guys that wanted to be winners and then guys when they lost and this is the setup for the bob gibbons tournament champions is that it celebrates winners right okay because of the bracket it's win or go home and we saw a lot of guys that really took it personally as mj says I was, i'm re-watching the last dance by the way so if i mix in a lot of mj last dancesms I, i'm doing it but but we saw a lot of guys who really were, were, were pretty upset that they lost which i hate for the moment but i love for the longevity right and so I, we saw a lot of that. We saw a lot of competitiveness come out of that, which really gets me excited. Again, we, we keep talking about how the funnel keeps pointing to July. And I think that funnel is pointing a lot of players to the right situations for the month of July because the competitiveness gets better and better and better. Yeah, no, so that was my number one takeaway is that you got to be bigger and better than the hype. Yeah, you're right, J.Y. I mean, this, this Bob, the, the, the tournament as a whole was a great stage for players to showcase their desire to win. You know, and yeah. a lot of times players step out in the tournaments oftentimes. And because, you know, you're going to get your standard three games or four games. It's like, oh, OK, you know, well, we can come out on day one and uh, it'd it be a, me, a, a measly performance. that's not as good. But you saw with this tournament, if you came out on day one on the wrong foot, you kind of had to play catch up during the whole weekend. But some guys were like yeah. on a mission from day one. 
man, let's go ahead and get this thing going instantly the moment we step foot on the floor. Yeah, and and that and I think we saw that as the tournament marched on, really particularly right out of the gate at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. Like we had nothing but absolute big time matchups across the board, across all the age groups. And, and if there were even, I mean, listen, only one team can win a bracket. So you have a lot of teams that probably went home disappointed, but I but I hope that they also went home pretty pleased with what the effort was and the, and the takeaways. I know a lot of the coaches were that I talked to um, were really pleased with that. So the competitiveness that the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions really breeds, I think is really important. I actually put that Twitter, I put that a, a poll question out on Twitter and on my Instagram what do you like better? Do you like matchup games? Do you like, or do you like uh, uh, bracket games? I didn't add pool to bracket because that wasn't something that I was wanting to hear about. I want to know, do you like the bracket games over the, the, or the matchup games? Probably 65% of people said they like the bracket, like right out of the gate. And I, and I don't disagree with them. And I, I, I like that style a lot better too. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it makes more competitive basketball. It makes for a better product oftentimes. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's keep moving, man. Quarter number one is done. Let's go ahead now. Go to number two. Let's talk about some All-American statuses, man, because we've got okay. some guys that really stepped up to the plate and boosted their stock in a major way. Let's hear from you, brother. Talk to us. Yeah, so I'm really interested. The last couple of classes is the point guard position. Like, we know size is always going to be there. We know big wings are going to be there. That's a pretty trendy thing. But to me, the guard play over the last couple of years at the high school level, I'm not sure how long it projects as far as the games being played college and beyond, right? Like I'm not really, I haven't been super overwhelmed by the depth of that position. So like every year I'm really looking at the point guard position this year. I think it's as deep as we've seen it for a long time. We probably have about 10 guys deep at that point guard position. And then the all Americans, you usually have about six that make the cut. I'm going to tell you right now, Bryce Griggs out of Houston, Texas, uh, at, a, at a high tower high school from JL three, that dude's got me paying close attention. So this is back-to-back major events for us. So we've seen him in action. We saw him kill it up in Kentucky. And I thought he was the best guard pound for pound that we had in the entire tournament. Um, His ball handling is exceptional. His passing is exceptional. I tweeted this out and I just kind of, I said it just kind of in passing, but great players are also great passers. And that came when I was watching Bryce Griggs where every time I saw him make a play, it wasn't because he was scoring. It was because he was making it an elite pass he was doing things with the ball as a ball handler that I haven't seen this year. Um, and he's got great size and he just has great feel. Um, I thought he was outstanding, outstanding at the Bob Gibbons tournament champions. I thought he was without a doubt, the, my favorite guard and a guy that I, I, I'm not ready to go Sharpie on him yet, but I'm getting pretty close to taking the lid off and, and putting him down as an all American status uh, for this class of 22. Um, you know, another guy too, like, we've seen Bruce Thornton out of Atlanta a million times. Like for you, like when I say his name, like, what do you think of right, right away? Man, I think, I think of high value point guard, man. I, I just think of a, a the ultimate point guard. You just want in your team, man. I mean, yeah. Bruce is, Bruce just does it all. And, and you talk about his leadership. You talk about him making the right play. You talk about it. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can give the ball to Bruce Thornton. And as a coach, you can sit there, grab a smoothie and just sit on the bench and be fine and watch <laughs> him be a court maestro, man. I, it's He gets the job done every time. Yeah. I mean, I'm co-signing what you just said. I, I think what you said at the outset was leadership. I, I don't know if there was a better leader in the field. He was vocal. He raised the level of play for a skill factory team that he had over the course of the weekend. I think Ohio State is getting a, a player that is going to withstand just the ruggedness of the Big Ten. So right. he's going to have Tom Izzo just throw all of his warriors at him, right? He's going to go to Ann Arbor on a, on a big night in conference play and hear everybody in Mason Gold just getting after you, and he's going to be unflappable. And we've seen that at the high school level of Milton. We've seen them do that with TSF. I think when you look at the body of work of the point guards, I think Bruce Thornton has a resume that you can't ignore. And I'm really excited about what we talked about last week, having apples to apples opportunities to see guys go head to head where I really want to see Bryce Griggs and Bruce Thornton go head to head. Right. I want to see those types of guys where Bruce is such a great defender. How does he handle the ball handling and the dynamic ability that Bryce Griggs brings to the table? So to me, those are the two guys where if I'm looking at the short list, I think those two guys really made a super strong impression. If I'm looking for the, in the totality of it all, uh, I thought those were the two guys when I'm looking at the all American status, top 25 guys in the class, 
I think they really put a really great argument together for themselves um, on this historic stage that we just had. Absolutely agree with you, man. You talk about guard play. I, I purposely enjoy watching Bruce and Bryce, man. And if you if that matchup ever happens again, man, I, I think I've got to be the one that there for it. Some way, somehow, live stream, i got to see that matchup down the line. Yeah. Um, Jay Wallace, well, go ahead and transition to some bigs now. And, and you sure. know, listen, I'm a huge fan of big men that who who – who are able to dominate the game, spread whether that's in the on offense, whether that's on defense. And I saw a game, I'm not trying to get too far ahead of myself, but I saw a game that really just opened my eyes on a few big men. But I'm going to let you have it, have it first, JY. Talk to us about some of the better big men you saw at the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions. No, I want to hear what you have to say. No, right, I want to hear what, you're, what, what, you, what you brought it. to the table. I'll say it. I love Ernest Uday, okay? Yeah. Like, I watched him play, man, in the JL3 and Southeast League game. And for Southeast Elite, you talk about a player having a game-winning dunk, okay? But let's go – like, before that, he was spring the floor in transition to get back down court on that play. So it's like yeah. you're, you're seeing a guy who ha- has an incredible motor. He's literally making a play above the rim defensively, right? Contesting everything, blocking everything. It's like every time a rebound goes up, up oh, there's Ernest. And then you match him up with, you know – a guy, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but a guy like Vin Lubin, you know, and it's like you got the ultimate kind of three-four yeah. combo, man. It, it was just a sight to see for Southeast Elite, man. Well, that was, I think, a big takeaway for the weekend was was the front lines right. that we had. And, and teams that went in the 17U division had elite front lines, yeah. uh, particularly on the defensive end. And, that, and, like, I told Ernest after the game, I said, listen, like that dunk that you had in the semifinals to beat JL3, I thought top to bottom, I thought JL3 and Team Thad were our probably – where our we they are our most talented team top to bottom that we had in the field and that matchup on sunday afternoon or mid morning i guess it was with southeast elite that was that go ahead dunk was probably one of the most important plays that i've seen um at swanee sports academy at this historic event i I told them i said that's that's a historic play like that'll go down we just don't see that very often um if this was march madness i mean that would be a dunk that that you see in sports bars and small college towns 20 years from now you know, on that type of platform. And Ernest, I thought Ernest was a guy, I, you know, I knew he had a really good season at Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando. I've talked to a lot of people, my friend Scott Golden, who runs Hoops Exchange, who's probably the, the guy I trust the most in Florida. I talked to a lot of coaches down there. They're like, yeah, I think he's going to be pretty good. I think this was the weekend now where we're going to probably look back and go, that's where he cemented himself as a top 100, top 75, or whatever it may be, national prospect that when July comes around, He's going to have a long list of ACC schools, SEC schools, et cetera, uh, that are that are not only involved, but they're sending their head coach week one in the live period to go watch him play and probably offer him. I, I thought he did as much for, him, for himself comparative to anybody else in the whole tournament. I thought he was tremendous. And you mentioned Vin Allen Lubin. Consistent, 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 consistent production, production, production. Like so good, so hard to guard. Um, just like I actually think he's the perfect – but we see now like a six, seven type mm-hmm. of guy, like a PJ Washington that we saw from back in the day, like inside outside guy that can get to the foul line. Elite, elite. And that game, man, I'm with you. If you have a chance to go back and watch on be the beast, Oof. if you just need to watch some games as we're watching play in games, like if you need like a, a precursor to some high level NBA stuff, pull that one up, man. That one's good. Really good. For sure. Team Florida. Can we talk about them for a second? Yes. Like let's keep going. I was exactly about to bring that up. Go ahead. Jay. Okay. Because as good as that front line was for Southeast Elite, by the way, I thought our Floridian groups in 1700 mm-hmm. was stacked. I mean, it was loaded, loaded. Florida is so good in homegrown guys, no less homegrown players in Florida. It, it, I, I thought it was tremendous. But anyways, Team Florida, they won the other bracket. We had we had three brackets in 17U and we had them divided up on, on different levels of talent. Um, and Team Florida was exceptional. What they did in the bracket play, I thought Brennan Laurent yes. was probably the best interior defender that we had in the entire tournament. I just put it up on our on our Twitter page on Hoopsin Twitter, or it might have been mine. I don't know. It's on it's on all of our platforms. But go watch that. It's almost. I remember remember Ike, um, uh, big Ike that played for the Georgia Stars, Georgia Stars went yeah. to, uh, Florida State and Seton Hall kind of bounced around. Yep. I asked a video company one time to put together a video highlight package of just shot blocking only mm-hmm. and Brennan Lawrence, I pull it up and I'm watching it. It's almost nothing but block shots. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> like we need more mixtapes of just nothing but block shots. And Brennan Lawrence was, was phenomenal. I thought a no brainer top 100 guy, uh, a no brainer priority, you know, um, 
high major power five conference guy. Uh, I thought probably the best defensive team in the entire tournament was team Florida. Uh, they had size. They came at you. Uh, we, we were writing about them all week. Um, big Prince Masongo. I, I, for, for, forgive me. I'm not sure how you pronounce your last name, Prince. Um, and then, and then Carl, again, sorry, Carl, I'll pronounce your last name. Chevron, perhaps a yeah. uh, class of 23 guard, um, probably one of the best defensive guards in the whole tournament. So I thought those guys were were really, really important for their team. And to me, I thought that was a don't, wouldn't you agree? Like some of the best players that we saw were non-scores, best passers, ball handlers, defenders. Yeah. JY, but you got to realize this too. Like when you want to win games, you need guys that do that. Yeah. So you look, you look at, you know, Southeast League, you look at Team Florida, they go far because you got those guys that value other things other than just scoring the basketball. They play defense, they get rebounds, they limit those second chance opportunities yeah. for opposing teams. You know, this, those little things matter. Well, I thought the guy that tied all that together was Solomon Washington from Team Thad. We've talked about him before on this, and we've written about him ad nauseum on our site. But I, and I tweeted this out, and I, I believe this to the core. I think he plays on a team that gets to the third weekend at least in the NCAA tournament. I've talked to, I talked to a high level, high level uh, program, division one program yesterday about that. And I said, he's the difference of you guys winning your league. He's the difference of you guys getting past the first weekend. He's the difference potentially getting past the second and third weekend of the NCAA tournament, because he's, to me, he's the type of guy that causes such a havoc on defense that we saw that Baylor had that Houston had a lot of these programs had. Um, and I think he's a player that, that we don't have that, that many guys in the, in the high school ranks that you know what their intrinsic value is going to be the minute they get to campus. And Solomon Washington, I think, is an absolute defensive stopper. So much so, how about this? This is my favorite thing I found post-event is I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy, man. I don't know how to tag guys and stuff on Twitter. I never do it. And so Ty Young's always on me about like doing that more often. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it for this tournament. So I look up Solomon Washington and on his on his bio it says five star stopper and i was like this is my favorite player in the country that's dope like i was like this is that like he gets it right like he 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 comprehends that and like that's going to serve him well for his entire basketball career if that's the mindset that he wants to go into but that ties into all the things that we talked about um as far, and i don't know if he's a big man i don't know if he's a wing whatever whatever i want him on my team and i want him on the floor um, I've actually got a big story coming out on him, uh, hopefully soon, if I can get through this pile of papers. Um, and I know you had a good conversation with him too, uh, yeah. on, on video. We got a lot of stuff out there on Solomon as well, but yeah, I thought big men and, and go to hoopscene.com. We've got so much oh, content that we're rolling out. You have probably like 30 interviews. <laughs> at least. Um, our friends at OST have got all kinds of clips. Every time I get a new email, it's OST sending me like a bunch of new files for us to post. I can't keep up. Um, and we got photos and, and our staff, which was tremendous over the weekend. We've got story after story after story going through. So make sure you check that out. If you're a college coach, like do yourself a favor. Um, we're keeping it open, meaning like it's all free content. We're not putting in premium quite yet. Um, so go through it and read up on that and recruit these guys, man. Go recruit these guys. I, I'm, I'm, I'm an anti-hype guy. But this event has tons of hype that came with it. And, a lot, and all of it was justified. And I think all the guys we've talked about us here would justify that as well. Man. You got me getting ready to go back to B2B and watch games. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, j well, look, man, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We got through three quarters. Let's get through yeah. the fourth bullet point here. And this is, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of made I'm mixed feelings about this, man. I wish I would have seen more. I mean, I was at SSA, but there were so many good teams in the younger division. Amazing. Bruh. Oh, That's how it is God. every year, like every single year. So we talked about it in our last Just a Minute pod that we did is that I would always go out and I'd carve time out in that loaded event to go watch underclassmen. And I want, I always keep that tradition alive. And so we had six courts over at the Gwinnett Infinite um, Forum over there in Duluth, just right down the road from Swanee, which by the way, we're going to use that a lot more moving forward. So I hope teams enjoyed that. So that gives you a chance. You can go, you can go next tournament. We do you're going. All right. Deal. That, that works, All man. Right. Thank you, bro. I, I appreciate I'm gonna, it. I'm look out for you. I'm gonna look out for you. I'm gonna <laughs> go John Stockton on you and just drop you a good pass. But yeah, so Justin Byerly and I went over there on Saturday morning, but like Brianna Taylor or Brianna uh, Patton was over there. And so was um, um, Josh Tech was over there. Uh, jo Jerome Reed was over there. Everybody was over there. Everybody was over there. And so we had a chance to really do a good job of, of watching the under underclassmen guys. The 16 under division was loaded. And I thought each one teach one 16U was as good of a, a team that we had in the entire tournament 
Uh, loaded, man. Absolutely loaded. Uh, the Georgia Stars were good. I thought Isaiah West from the Georgia Stars 16 under program was probably the second, maybe second best guard I saw all weekend. Um, tremendous player out of the Nashville area. Looks like Keon Johnson out there. Same hairstyle, same game. That's, you know, that's my guy, man. I know, man. that's your dude, that's man. Guy. You that guy. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what else do we got? Who else do we have? Oh, Florida Lee out of New Orleans. I thought had four guys that I thought were probably some of the most impressive sleepers that I saw. Uh, Mebo had some guys. I mean, just so many, so many guys. And so like team Florida had you know a bunch of players, but that each one teach one group is special. And I think that's a team that we're going to be hearing a lot about over the next 18 months as they play travel ball, Steve Reese, their head coach. This is probably one of his best teams he's ever had. And Steve's had some dudes back in the day. Yeah, man. Right? He's had some dudes. Yeah, so awesome. I, I think that's when, when, when Steve says that, you're like, oh, okay, I'll listen. I'll listen. Cause yeah, I don't think he's that much of a hype guy. Really. I, a lot of travel guys will promote their guys, but Steve's pretty low key. And, and when he tells you that you, you seem to perk up and, and listen to that a little bit more. So I thought he was great. Uh, I thought that team was loaded, but again, we're going to be starting to roll out our top underclassmen from the event um, really starting on Wednesday evening. So take a look at that. If you're seeing this after Wednesday, go to hoopsing.com slash news, and check all out, uh, check out all of our content that we've got going on over there. Man. High major coach, high major head coach, call me right now, and I know who he wants to talk to me about. <laughs> Joe, your phone's been ringing the whole time, man. And I, that's I, why I, this I, pile I, is not getting smaller is because the coaches keep calling, which is great. I I love it. Like keep calling me, man. Keep calling me. Let's help these guys out and get them some opportunities. Run, run JY cell phone bill up. Just do it. Just run my battery out. Like I got to keep it on the plug nonstop, man. Facts, facts, facts. Well, Jay Wilder, look, I mean, you, as you can tell, and as we discussed in this whole interview today, the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions was a phenomenal event. Yeah. Touchstone, you got to be better than the hype. And guys came out and they brought their games, not their names. They wanted to win. And I think that's what yeah. I'm best about this event as a whole. So much good action. So many good teams. So many good players. You know, I'm getting hyped now even more so for July. I don't want to get ahead of myself. No, get out of yourself. Go all in on that. Man. All right, so let me ask you this to close out for the day, Jay Wilder. <laughs> okay. What's next? Let's go. Yeah, as the best of South is next. Like, right before we got on, I was checking our sign-ups, and, like, we had some bangers already sign up. So, like, best of South is going to be phenomenal. I think everybody's feeling that. The energy we've already felt for that. People are excited to come to Atlanta for down to downtown July 8th through the 11th. Um, registration's open right now. We're going to have our friends from NY to LA, Ohio basketball, back with us again. Um, I think that event is going to be absolute special, just absolutely special. Um, I was talking to our guy, Stan Johnson, who does photos for us. And he did a really cool set of photos for us two years ago um, before the pandemic hit. And he was excited about doing some different things. And it reminded, I went back and I looked at all of his photos he took from that event. And it just really got me excited about all the different opportunities to bring your teams to downtown Atlanta uh, experience to me, my favorite city in the country. You know, I, I'm, I'm certainly biased on that. Um, but I think that's going to be just a phenomenal event. It's going to be so great to have college coaches back in the building for that as well. Uh, Registration is open July 8th through the 11th. After that, here in Arizona and Phoenix, we're going to have the Valley Jam. Uh, really excited about that. That's starting to come together, getting some bones. Uh, we're going to be up on the northwest side of, of Phoenix, maybe like 30 minutes from the airport. Um, so if you want to do something new, you want to do something different, you know, diversify your travel schedule a little bit. Um, we're, that's a projected NSA live period. It's not official it's being projected and that's kind of what we're going off of. So that's going to be July 16th through the 18th. Is that the dates on that? I think that that's what it is. But if you go to hoopscene.com slash events, um, you go over there and you can find that. Um, I, I don't, I'm hoping we can have as many teams as we can for that, but we may have a capacity cap because of the amount of courts that we have for that. So if you're a team in the West and you got this far in just a minute and you're still watching, appreciate that. Um, but go ahead and sign up and, and get involved with that, which I think we can do some really good things for your players uh, and your program and wrapping things up. We're going to go back to Louisville, uh, we're going to go back to the grassroots uh, live showcase, uh, summer showcase up there in uh, the Kentucky Expo Center. Again, that's also a projected NCAA live period, July 23 through 25. Um, that'll close things out for us in the summer. And if it's as good, if it's 80% of what it was in April, it'll be one of the best events of the entire travel basketball calendar. So uh, a lot to do, hoopscene.com slash events. Um, we've sold out every event that we've had this year. Wow. Every event. And so people are asked, when's the deadline to register? Irrelevant because we're going to sell out and we're going to, we're going to sell out a space. And so if you want to be a part of this, if you want to change the lives of your players that you work with, go register today and get on this platform that's been proven so, so much over the last 10 years. Oh, you heard it from the man. What a plan. Jay, well, I'm excited, man. And 
again, everyone, just so we're clear, go to hoopscene.com slash events, coaches, go register your teams now. Like, don't wait. Don't yeah. get left off the bus because this train is moving super yeah. fast. Make sure you do so. Jay, I appreciate the time, man. We're that was a fun four quarters, quarters man. Series. That was a great four quarters. We need to do that more often, I think. Well, yeah, let's run it again. The next, next, next week we'll do the same thing. I like that. It makes everything flow better. I like it. Okay. I'll talk so much. We'll have like triple overtime probably. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Just a Minute. As always, I'm your Hoop Scene host, Austin Smith, and I have the pleasure each week of sitting next to the editor-in-chief here at HoopScene.com, our guy, Justin Young. JY, thanks for your time, boss. Thanks, Austin.